Hello and welcome to this quick presentation on averaging. As the shaft turns in the machine and the gears mesh together and the balls roll around in the bearing and so on, the vibration changes from one moment to the next. And inside the machine, noise is generated. Random sources of vibration and sound that might come from inside the machine or outside the machine. Now the aim when you go to take a vibration reading is to create a reading which really represents all the vibration from the machine and it must be a repeatable measurement which means that if you were to take a measurement, wait two minutes and then take the measurement again, it should be the same. Yes, there'll be little bits of variation, little, little variations here and there, but it really should be very, very similar. If it's not, then the, either means the machine is changing wildly from one time to the next. It certainly wouldn't mean the condition has changed. What it really means is that you are not taking enough averages. So the averaging process is there to ensure that all the noise has been averaged together to give us a good repeatable measurement. So we can compare measurements and say to ourselves, the only reason the vibration should change is if the condition has changed. Hopefully not because the conditions under which the machine is operating have changed. So, how does this work? Well, we'll go through a little demonstration of this with real vibration in just a moment. But what happens is we've got vibration from the machine. This might be you know, 30 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever, of just the vibration from the machine. Now, when the analyzer starts to take its measurements, it has to take a block of time waveform and calculate the FFT from that. So that's what it does. It takes a block of time waveform. Now that the length of that block depends on your Fmax setting and the number of samples in it depend on your resolution setting. So that together they dictate how long this is, but there might be 1024 if you had a 400 line spectrum, 2048 for an 800 line spectrum and so on. But anyway, point is it just grabs a chunk of time. Now it has to go through something called windowing, which we'll explain separately, but then from that it calculates the FFT. So we've got one spectrum. Now, if we were to just do that, just one average, repeat the measurements a moment later, we would definitely see variation in the spectrum, so that's not going to be enough. So the analyzer basically grabs another block of time, windows that, and creates another FFT, another spectrum. And then it does it again, and then it does it again. So if you were to ask for four averages, it would end up with these four spectra. Now, mathematically it's done a little bit differently, but just for the point of this demonstration, we end up with four. And then from those four, we keep an average spectrum. So let's just look at how that actually happens. There are our four spectra that were calculated by the data collector. A little later we'll, we've got another presentation I should say that talks about um, overlap averaging which is a slightly different process but we'll have a look at that as a separate little mini presentation. Anyway, so what we can do is have a closer look at the spectra and we can see that there's variation. There may be variation in the amplitude of these peaks and there's certainly going to be variation in the noise floor. So what we do, we can look at that a bit more closely, we do a calculation and that for each single frequency in the spectrum, each line of the spectrum or each bin of the spectrum, depending which terminology you prefer, we're going to take the four values, sum them together and divide them by, in this case, four. That's all that complicated formula means. It's just at every single line in the spectrum, we take the average and if we were using RMS averaging, we square them and then square root the sum of them. But anyway, we end up with one average spectrum from all that data. Um, as I said earlier, the aim is that if we were to repeat this process, the average we would get would be very similar. If it's not, then it means we need more averages. And there is another little mini presentation on how to choose how many averages, but if a machine uh, generates vibration with more variation, then you need more averages, basically. Um, important point is that the noise is not actually removed from the spectra. It's just 
average together. There's some high vibration, low vibration, just, just the variation and it says, okay, I'll just grab the average of that. So let's use one of our simulators to show that with real data. So here it is, there is real data and I can play that so you can hear it. And down the bottom there's the instantaneous spectrum, you know, the spectrum just from that little bit of time. This is actually 30 seconds, it tells me here, of, of vibration. This is just one little chunk of it to create that spectrum. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you there are more options here, don't worry about the detail too much, but if I turn on linear averaging, then as I step through from each spectrum, one after another, you can see it's, it's calculating the average there. Now, to see that in a bit more detail, we're going to do something. First, I'm going to choose a sample of data that's a bit more interesting because just in this area, we happen to get a lot of peaks that rise and fall. So I'm just going to zoom in on those ones. I'm going to reset my averages. Now, watch really closely. Just watch these peaks here and those peaks. And there's another presentation which describes this in more detail, but basically, as we go through, there's one average worth of data. This is the first average, if you like. The second average, third average, fourth average. Now, if you select four averages, that's what you're going to get. The orange line's the final spectrum. But if you look in the background there, you can see the grey vibration represents the, the other spectra that we uh, measured from the machine and that comprise the average. So, ideally, if we had chosen four averages from this machine and we continued to go to the fifth average and the sixth average and the seventh average, well, the orange line wouldn't change much. Notice that at this, these frequencies, it's very constant. That vibration is hardly varying at all. You see a little bit of variation at some frequencies down here in the noise, but it just happens to be that these three peaks vary by a lot more. And as I continue to, say, a fifth average and a sixth average, you see that orange line changing by a bit. And that means that there would be variation. Anyway, the point of this presentation was just to give you a bit of an idea of what the analyzer is doing when you choose, uh, well, when you turn on linear averaging and you get uh, four or five or ten averages, whatever you happen to choose. It's just grabbing chunks of time waveform, calculating the spectrum, and then averaging the vibration together at each frequency. We have other little mini presentations which talk about this topic just from a few different perspectives. What if the speed varies? What if there's a lot of variation in the vibration? Um, yeah, other, other issues. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you found it useful. See you later.